Okay, this is the condition of the box that it came in. It's a little bit crushed on the top, so I wanted to take a short video before opening it, just in case. Welcome to the Xbox One S that I bought on eBay um, as broken. So, uh, don't expect much out of it, but it's supposed to at least turn on and then reboot. Let's change inputs. Uh, I think it'll be HDMI 3. Oh, nothing's showing up yet. So which one is power? Is this power? Oh, that's neat. Huh. So... Okay. Interesting. Hmm. Let's press and hold. So it turns instantly off. Whoever owned this before scratched out the uh, warranty sticker. So it looks like I'm going to get to repair this after all. Now there's one fix for it turning on and off, but I don't think this will work. And that's simply to plug in Ethernet, so let's give that a try. Nope. It's funny, the motherboard makes a sound itself, so I guess that's a, a diagnostic sound. I'm going to have to look that up. Hey, ever seen the inside of an X-Bone? An Xbox One S, anyway. See, the Xbox One S has a built-in power supply, so that's one of the features, I guess. There's a 500 gig hard drive, a disk drive. You got, like, Wi-Fi modules and stuff like that off to the side. That's it. It's pretty simple. It's an AMD APU computer. Oh my god. I don't know if you see this, but that's the SATA connector flapping in the breeze. This plastic pulled off of those pins uh, when the hard drive came out. It pulled uh, slowly, but uh, yeah, that's how shit this connector is. Oh well. I'm going to try and get all those connectors back where they were. Oh, oh. I'm close. So I got to be really careful. back on that one. Yeah! It's the first time I've ever repaired a SATA connector. Jesus. Microsoft. Why were you so cheap? It's it's mostly in there. I have to uh, pull it up a bit. Get this one connector in there. And push it back down. I think that'll stay. I might glue this plastic piece down to the motherboard so it doesn't come out again. Okay, you might also find this interesting. The power supply, it really only goes to two places. Um, it has six connectors, but they just go to different spots in the motherboard that need 12 volts. So, um, I checked, and there's nothing wrong with the supply. It supplies 12 volts, if I can get this stupid thing. Uh, if I can get these pins to go into the connector there. There we go. 
close enough for horseshoes and hand grenades. That means there's nothing wrong with the power supply. Here you can see the old thermal grease and holy shit Microsoft what are you doing? Um, not sure if you're aware but that's way more thermal grease than anything needs and it's like oh it's dry I don't know if this thing gets hot but uh, I know the APU in my TV computer gets very hot very fast so I'm guessing this is not a good thing so I hope when I replace the thermal grease with some uh, arctic Civil silver that that will fix it so as you can see there um, uh, I've taken the thermal grease off the processor it looks nice and smooth um, uh, the heatsink I did uh, get it with the screwdriver a little bit so it's it's got some scratches but that should not hurt it at all uh, I'm gonna try some new thermal grease and hopefully that fixes the problem in case any of you out there are interested in how much thermal grease you should put on a die, um, that's how much I do, and I've never had an issue with that. You're just creating a really thin layer between the CPU die and the imperfections in your heatsink. That's the only reason you need thermal grease, is to create an interface so that you get better thermal um, uh, transfer from the CPU to the to the uh, heatsink. So. Don't over don't overdo it. Just a little tiny bit. And if you feel um, not great about just putting a dot there, you can try and spread it out with a credit card. But you don't even need to do that. Uh, just putting the heat sink down will do that for you. Well, moment of truth. Let's try it. Nope. So that's just the PS3, don't worry about that. Um, uh, so it doesn't appear to be the issue. I've, I've read other issues where somebody said it was the board in the DVD drive that doesn't work. It's making it turn on and off. We'll have to see. Further investigation is required. Hard drive's back on, it works. So. Okay, this is kind of interesting. Let's try testing the voltage rails near the processor. momentarily 5 volts. Why does it shut down? I don't know. 